Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and today I'm going to be discussing how to defeat Egypt in Rome Total War. This is specifically going to be for how to defeat Egypt on the campaign map. Very soon I will make a very similar video where I discuss how to defeat Egypt on the battlefield, but today I want to just focus on the campaign map. And the reason I chose Egypt to start off this sort of series with is because I feel like it's a faction that a lot of people struggle with, particularly new players. And there's several reasons for that. One is, of course, that they, they have quite a good economy, they're quite rich, they can pump out troops, and particularly on the higher difficulties, they have this tendency to just pump out full-stack armies out of seemingly nowhere and just pollute the field with them, and it's very hard to sort of break down all those armies in order to defeat Egypt, particularly if you're a weaker faction. And of course, Egypt itself has quite a strong army. They've got chariots, they've got some quite good spearmen, some quite good um, archers, like bowmen and all that. Definitely not an easy army to take down either, and the combination of these factors make Egypt quite a difficult faction to face. And I used to, when I first started the game, I used to find Egypt very, very hard to defeat. But over time, I've, you know, gained a little bit of knowledge on the game, and now I find it actually pretty easy, because I've sort of got a formula for defeating them, and it works pretty much every time. So, what we're going to do, this video is going to be focused on two sort of specific scenarios, because, of course, every campaign is going to be different. That's the great thing about Rome Total War, it is unique, there is no sort of set formula exactly, but there are basically two situations where you're going to face Egypt. One situation is if you're a faction that starts far away from Egypt. So for example, I'm going to be using the example of Greece, but you could also say for Dacia, Britannia, the Roman factions, Gaul, Spain, etc. We're going to talk about what to do if you're a faction that is far out and is going to attack Egypt, where Egypt are likely going to have a big already established empire which is going to be hard to break down we're going to discuss how to defeat that and then also in the second half of the video we're going to discuss if you're nearby to Egypt so Parthia, Armenia, the Seleucids and maybe even Numidia if you, you know, consider them close by um, how to defeat Egypt when they're just starting the game but you've also got a lot of other factions around you and there's plenty more factors to think about so two sort of different scenarios which we're going to discuss how to defeat Egypt in. So we're going to get straight into the video. I'm going to use the example of my Greek cities campaign. So if you haven't seen that campaign, spoiler warning, but basically in that campaign I uh, did indeed defeat Egypt pretty easily, actually very, very quickly. We were at one minute at war with Egypt and in the next minute they were gone. And that was when I realised, yeah, I have a pretty good sort of method of defeating them. And I'm going to be using clips from that campaign to sort of illustrate my point with a sort of good given example. So let's just get straight into it and I'm going to discuss what happened and how to defeat Egypt, first of all, if you're far away. So let me set the scene for you. Hopefully you can see in the bottom left corner the campaign map and we are playing as Greece so we are the sort of like beigey red colour and you can see we've conquered Italy, we've conquered most of Turkey and the Greece region and Bit, bits of North Africa, and really it's now time to deal with the Egyptians. The Seleucids are gone as well, we dealt with them pretty handily. I've got to stress that it's very, very important to attack Egypt at the right time. So what I did to sort of set out a bit of context on how I defeated the Egyptians is I waited for a while, I waited to build up my army, I waited up to build my navy, which is very, very important when you're defeating Egypt. And what more importantly really, is I positioned all those armies in places where I wasn't going to actually physically declare war on Egypt, but I was ready to at the moment. When the moment was right and to strike, all my armies would be in position to move bang, 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 and put settlements under siege and take them nice and quickly. Now, the reason why you want to sort of be patient and you don't want to just say, okay, well, we're near Alexandria, let's just attack it now, even if we're not prepared up in the north. The reason is because once you declare war on Egypt, that's it. Very little going back. It's very hard to, you know, make peace with Egypt. They're, you know, not a particularly kind faction in terms of diplomacy. So once you declare war, that's it. All hell breaks loose. And if you're not fully prepared, you're going to get screwed over. So what was my tactic? Well, the main tactic is if you are, if you already have kind of an established empire, which I'm presuming if you are attacking from far away, like I did from Greece, you're going to have a fairly established empire anyway. What you want to do is, first of all, defeat any factions that are around Egypt. Now, I wasn't currently at war with Armenia, so they were a non-factor. I defeated the Seleucids all but, I mean, they had one settlement, they basically had nothing in it, and the Parthians were pretty much all gone as well. So, the important reason why you want to defeat the other factions is because you don't want to declare war on Egypt and then find out that you're starting to get attacked from 
three or four other fronts by other factions, that's not going to be helpful at all. You want to have your full focus on Egypt. If you fully focus on Egypt, they're pretty easy to defeat. But because they're quite a tough faction otherwise, you don't want to be fighting three or four wars at once. You really want to be focusing on Egypt. So, first of all, clear out any other factions or, like I did, have an alliance with Armenia so they're a non-factor unless they betray me. Then what you want to do is you want to do a sort of pincer movement. I suppose that's what you call it. Basically a sort of surrounding tactic where you have some armies attacking from the north and some armies attacking from the south. Now, as you can see, my sort of general strategy was to sweep in from Turkey from the north. So the north was pretty much already covered and secure anyway. And we needed to get troops, though, into the south. So what we did here is it was very important we had several large navies. We had two, actually. We had two large navies, pretty much full stack armies on each. And they came over from the Greek mainland, which is sort of my recruiting hub. And they came over to the Alexandria, Memphis, Thebes region in the south. That's what I'm calling it anyway, the south of the Egyptian empire. Um, so that we'd have plenty of force in this region to deal with them there. Now, the reason you want to not just focus all your force, let's say, in the north, some of your focus on this uh, but splitting it between the north and the south the reason why you want to do that is because you want to split up the egyptian armies now the egypt will likely have a lot of troops because like i said at the beginning they have a good economy they're re it's really a great place to have because it's lots of farming they're near the ocean etc etc and what that means is they're likely to have lots of troops on the field now let's say i attacked fully from the north what's going to happen is all those troops are going to be concentrated up in the north and they're going to come and they're going to really hit you hard in the north because all their troops are going to be organising and think, okay, they're attacking the north, let's flood up there quickly and, you know, then you're going to be like, oh dear, we have five or six full stack Egyptian armies to fight, that's going to be tough. What you want to do instead is attack simultaneously, very, very important you attack simultaneously from the north and the south at the same time so you split up the force so if you have strong forces in the north and the south but the Egyptians having to split up their force only have half forces half armies in the north and the south respectively because they need to try and defend everywhere as quick as they can then they're going to find it a lot tougher and the battle is going to be much easier because you're less likely to fight these big full stack 20 unit armies you're going to be fighting maybe 8 10 12 stack armies which are much easier if you're fully prepared uh, to fight them so that's what you want to do first so to set the scene this is what we did we had troops up in uh, Alexandria and we had another boat that was going towards Memphis or they were going to drop troops off to go to Memphis notice that we hadn't quite attacked yet but what actually happened was which we'll show right now Right, so as you can see here, the Egyptians actually declared war on us first, which is fine. We were fully prepared for it, so it was pretty much perfect timing. And they attacked Damascus, which I'll circle here. The Egyptians attacked Damascus. Now, you can see that we had an army a little bit to the north, just south of Antioch. And I kind of had a decision to make. I could go to Damascus and try and sort of relieve that. But I had plenty of force in Damascus because, like I said, I was prepared. Or we could go down and attack Sidon, which is pretty much empty. Now, this is the very, very important thing. You need to take settlements quickly. What you don't want to do is fight a lot of armies out in the open field without any reward. When I first used to play this game, what I would do when I faced Egypt was I thought, damn, they have like five 20 stack armies on the field. Let's go out and attack them and we'll grind them down. Now, what happens is if you do that, then, yeah, you, let's say you're amazing at the game, you can defeat them nice and easily great then five turns later a new one comes up and why does a new one come up because they've still got settlements they being the Egyptians the Egyptians still have settlements meaning they still have recruitment capacity meaning that you are basically just in a constant war of attrition where they have constantly got a base to pump out troops you're then killing them and they're like okay we'll just make some more and that's what they do now if you what instead if what you do is attack their cities, attack their recruitment bases, then they don't have anywhere to replace the troops. Meaning if you win battles, you really do win them because you're never going to see those guys again. So in this situation here, I could have fought the Egyptians on the open field in Damascus. That would have been the quote unquote safe option. But I decided not to do that. Instead, I'm going to go for the throat, which is Sidon, which is a recruitment place. Meaning that if we take that, the force is going to be split up. If we defeat them in Damascus, it means that 
they have no more recruitment capacity in this region, meaning that we can just go on and take other settlements nice and quickly. Now, another thing about the Egyptians is they have a very high propensity to have troops in the open field, but also have none in their cities. They don't really keep a garrison. They like to have their troops in the field, which works well for you because if you position your armies correctly, like I have, what you can do is exploit these empty cities. So, for example, Sidon here, um, and in a way almost bypass the armies that are on the open field. You can just walk in, Sidon, nice and easy to take. You can see there's basically nothing in there. The flag is almost empty. We can just waltz in with our full stack army of Amenocles of Philippi, and we can just walk in and say, well, we're here now, Sidon is our city, pretty much with no losses. Whereas if you fought them on the open field, well, you're going to take losses. That's pretty much unavoidable. So, you know, you're going to be kind of screwed there, particularly as they have sort of more recruitment capacity in this region because it is their region. So go for the empty cities rather than going for the safe option, which is defend Damascus, but then you're going to get another army that spawns out of Sidon. So what happened as me as a result of choosing to attack Sidon rather than defend Damascus, well actually the perfect thing happened, which was the Egyptians decided, okay, wait, we need to not attack Damascus now, we need to now go over and save Sidon. And what happened was the force was split again, which is what I was alluding to earlier. You wanna split up the big forces as much as you can. So Sidon is now in a position where we've got a full stack Greek army and then a couple of sort of weak-ish Egyptian armies, but nothing as strong as what would have been. And then we've got Damascus, which is completely free, basically spare troops to go and help out Sidon if necessary as well. So now we're in a much better situation. Rather than being on the defensive, we're on the offensive and we have an opportunity to take Sidon, which means that they're going to have less capacity to recruit uh, if we fight them in the future. So that was all good. And after a battle, like I said, we're going to talk tactics another time. After a pretty simple battle, we defeat that army out of Sidon, and it's basically ours. There's like two units in there, nice and easy. So we've taken our first settlement, basically. And there you go, Sidon is now ours. We still have a pretty much full stack army. We lost a few men, nothing too much. And now if you look, Palmyra, pretty much empty. So we now have two settlements up in the north. Damascus was Seleucid before this, by the way, it wasn't Egyptian. We now have two big armies, Palmyra is very vulnerable, there's no Egyptian armies nearby because what we've done is the one strong Egyptian army which was outside of Damascus got split up, meaning it was easier defeated, and we're in a good situation up in the north, very good situation, that's what you want to do. Over in the south there was no one in Alexandria because like I said, they, they like to have troops on the field rather than in the cities, so if you sneak up on them, sneak up on the cities and take them with a full stack army, really really easy. Um, we, we auto resolved this one actually because it was so easy, I don't normally auto resolve but we did and Alexandria was easily taken. Then we moved on to Memphis, exactly the same situation here, another full stack army well positioned, Memphis is empty, easily taken. And then immediately, this army, you've got to, this is the kind of thing you need to do. You need to sort of have a bit of forward thinking. We now have two armies in this region. So one of them is going towards a sort of Petra, Bostra region. Um, so we, we can quickly strike against those because, again, we don't want those cities to be in Egyptian hands for long. We want them to not have the opportunity to, you know, attack us with any more troops. Quickly go and take the cities before they can respond. This is the crucial thing with the Egyptian campaign. You need to strike quickly and efficiently. If you give them time to respond between taking settlements, that's it, you're done, because they are going to respond quickly. But if you strike, bam, 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 they're going to have no idea what to do, because they're going to have cities under siege in the north, cities under siege in the south, and not enough arms to deal with both. They're going to end up making stupid decisions, like splitting up armies and really having a bad old time. So we're about to take Memphis. Now, Memphis is a very important settlement, probably the most important in this region, because of the wonder of the world, the pyramids of Giza. And the reason that's really important and the reason you wanna take Memphis quickly is because it offers a public order bonus for all Egyptian culture settlements. So once you take Memphis, public order isn't really a problem. If you leave Memphis to last, let's say, then what you can happen, this happened not on YouTube, but when I was very, very first playing the game, is I was eventually conquering Egypt, but I hadn't conquered Memphis and then I lost like three settlements in one turn because I didn't have that public order bonus. If I had taken Memphis and prioritized that first, then I wouldn't have lost those settlements. They wouldn't have gone back into Egyptian hands. So definitely go for the Pyramids of Giza. It's gonna make your life a lot easier if you don't have to worry about public order because you've got one of the best wonders of the world. 
Up in the north, like I said, we combine the armies of Sidon and Damascus, and we're easily just going to waltz towards Palmyra. Pretty much no resistance there, because again, the Egyptians haven't had time to think, oh flip, we need to start making armies and start pumping them up north. And also, they're thinking, wait, maybe we've got armies in the south that we need as well. So the Egyptians, the AI isn't really sure what to do. We're going to take advantage of that. Go for the throat. Go for the sediments. Make sure they can't recruit anymore. Palmyra is vulnerable. Strike it. That's what we did. Now, we did send an army down to Thebes. This actually turned out to be a mistake, um, but it was quickly rectified. You'll see in a minute. Um, now, although I am saying go quick, go quick, go quick, you do need to be a little bit sensible. If you overextend too quickly, then what's going to happen is you're going to start having vulnerabilities, the same vulnerabilities that Egypt had, which is you're not going to have a proper garrison and all that. So you do need to make sure you're quickly retraining and training troops um, so that you can strike quickly without being too vulnerable. Now, the important thing when facing Egypt is that you really do have to have quite an established economy already. You can see that we have, was that 174,000 denarii? We're in a pretty good situation on the old economy front. And that's good because it means we can just pump out troops really, really quickly without having to worry about the bank going bust. So yeah, definitely would recommend having a good economy. Again, if you want me to discuss economy in another episode, then that's totally cool. I can do that then. But going down to Thebes was actually a mistake but we sort it out in a minute, so don't worry. So we are attacked outside of Palmyra. That's absolutely fine. We're gonna win this battle. You can see Bant's power is in our favor. So a couple of Egyptian armies start coming over, and this is what I'm saying. Once Egypt starts to sort of get wind of the fact that you're going to war with them, they start spawning armies out of nowhere and quickly and efficiently. So I was like, okay, let's draw back from Thebes. We've got plenty of troops in Memphis. Let's retrain, you know, regroup and then we're going to come back down to Thebes with a much stronger army but what you can see is there's three armies combined they're fairly strong but honestly nothing that amazing because again the force is split up if you had just attacked from the south then all the armies that are up on the north would be pouring south now and we'd be in a bit of a tough situation but these armies they're all split up they're all disorganized we've got a nice organized force here because we fully prepared beforehand and that has worked absolutely to our benefit here and then the army that was in Alexandria is moving towards Petra. Bit of a force here, actually. Captain Achorus is outside of Petra, so we might have to do a bit of good fighting skill over here. This is probably going to be the first battle you have to face. And it is likely you are going to have to face a full 20-stack army at some point when fighting the Egyptians. Um, you know, very, very unlikely you don't have to. And actually, something that I should have done in this campaign, which I didn't, was um, blockade the ports, by the way. I uh, didn't use my navy anywhere near effectively enough. If you do have a good navy, blockade the ports because that's going to stifle their economy and they're just not going to have a good time recruiting troops. But Egypt, they, they have responded. They are coming towards us. That's fine. We will deal with them. But you do need to be wary of that. So maybe I should have actually recruited a little bit more so we had a full 20 stack army to deal with them. That's something you might want to consider as well. So we won the battle outside of Thebes against the sort of three split up armies. That wasn't too bad. And Thebes is now ours. So we know how that southern bit of Af uh, uh, Egypt just pretty much sorted. That's all good. Then over here. So we've taken Palmyra, Damascus and Sidon. There's pretty much no response from the Egyptians because they're all down south thinking, oh, flip, we need to be down here. But actually, they should really be up here as well. But they haven't got enough men because they weren't expecting this surprise attack. So what we've done is we've combined the armies from these three settlements and three armies or you know, three settlements is better than one. Jerusalem now, although it has a decent amount of troops in, is still looking quite vulnerable because we just have the sheer amount of settlements in this region to deal with the Egyptians. That's why striking quickly, taking settlements nice and quickly means you have a much greater recruitment capacity. You can recruit three units per turn, whereas the Egyptians can only recruit one. And that's because you've taken that opportunity away from them. Their potential is immediately very much limited. So we get attacked outside Jerusalem. Slightly tough battle, but the balance power once more is in our favour, and you'll see in a second that we do win it, but we're going to go over to Thebes first. Thebes, again, this is a slightly tough battle, but we have the more organised army. I'm going to discuss how to defeat the Egyptians on the battlefield another time, and we do indeed win that battle. Now, what happened at Petra? You know there was that big army outside of Petra? Well, what have they done? They've had to flee Petra and go up north to deal with the armies up there and that's exactly what I'm saying what you need to do once you are sort of attacking them from all sides the big armies don't know what to do and 
they are just sort of walking all over the place, kind of unsure of themselves. So the big army that was at Petra is now near Bostra. They're going up north to deal with the fact that we've just taken Jerusalem off the Egyptians. And what it's meant is, is that we've just basically been able to walk into Petra when really that would have been a very, very tough fight. But didn't matter because we prepared properly. We did that pincer movement and it worked very well. Now, if you look, in a matter of turns, what we've done is we've managed to reduce Egypt to two settlements, one of them being Salamis, which is an island that they had basically no troops on anyway, the other one being Bostra, a weak settlement which has also no troops. And what we did, basically, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, is we combined the armies from Jerusalem and Petra, we faced that, uh, that big army in a big sort of showdown, we won it, and that was that. We, you know, that, that was that, that was the end of the Egyptians. So really, we had probably two sort of fairly toughish fights and one tough fight which we did win but even then it wasn't that tough because we had a similar amount of troops because we could combine the forces from the fact that we had simply more settlements than they did um so and that was on very hard difficulty this is really the hardest scenario you're going to get because this is the hardest difficulty they're going to recruit more troops they're going to be more sensible the ai and also they're going to be better on the battlefield but really we didn't have that much of a tough time basically what is my advice for when you're fighting Egypt and you are a faction that starts far away, meaning that Egypt are likely to have an established empire by the time you get here. Well, first of all, you want to do the pincer movement. You want to have armies coming from the north, armies coming from the south. That's why the navy is important. Two, you want to blockade the ports because you want to stifle their economy. You don't want them having lots of troops or lots of money to create more troops. That's not a good idea. Third of all, you want to strike quickly and simultaneously okay very very important you do that but once you start attacking don't attack them in the open field go for the vulnerable settlements get your spies going get your boats going look at what settlements are vulnerable and then strike one after the other have an established plan have several armies ready just positioned outside of the city outside of their zone of control ready to strike and then bang you can take alexandria memphis sidon all in very quick succession, meaning that the armies that are over in the sort of Bostra Petra region just chilling out because as far as they know they're at peace, are like, wait a minute, we need to split up and become weaker because we need to go in every direction. So that's the third thing you need to do. Fourth thing is take Memphis quickly, particularly if you have public order issues, Memphis is a great settlement. And also the settlements near the Mediterranean are just generally more profitable because they're by the sea, you get more sea trade. And I think that that's basically I think that's basically everything. Just strike quickly and don't fight them on the open field unless you you have to because it's much better taking a settlement than beating an army in the open field. Um, so they're basically the four sort of rules I would say the four tips if you're going to be facing the Egyptians. And I just showed you the sort of Greek campaign because it was a good example of how to quickly and efficiently deal with the Egyptians when you have a bit of time to prepare. So. How do you defeat the Egyptians when you are close by to them? Let's say Parthia, for example. Well, um, I actually did some faction guides on Rome Total. I am plugging other videos. I know, I'm sorry. Um, I'll leave a playlist link in the description. And what I did is I spoke from the perspective of every faction. So Parthia, Armenia, the Seleucids and Numidia in this example. And I spoke on how to, you know, beat the campaign as those factions and each guide is specifically tailor-made to discuss how to basically have defeat Egypt as those factions because all those faction guides should say defeat Egypt quickly because you don't want them to grow, you don't want them to expand, you don't want them to take up. Very similar to the Romans in fact. Uh, you don't want the Romans to expand and do all of that and it's similar with Egypt. So my basic rules if you're closer by is first of all focus all your force on Egypt if you can. So for example, if you're Parthia, don't worry about going to war with the Seleucids. Try not to go to war with Armenia. Try not to go to war with anyone else. Focus all your force on the Egyptians. If you can, it's easier in the earlier game to get diplomats to go out and get sort of um, alliances and you know ceasefires and all that. Try and get alliances with Armenia. Let's say you're Parthia. Try and get an alliance with Armenia nice and quickly. Seleucids doesn't matter too much if they attack you because they're quite weak. The Egyptians are likely to go for the Seleucids anyway. Now if you're obviously in the early game you're less likely to have the luxury of having loads of armies that you can spread some in the north and some in the south and so on and so forth. But if you can try and establish spy networks pretty early, spies are pretty cheap, they're pretty easy to get. If you can establish spies quickly, what you can do is spy on settlements and try and pick out which ones are weak. So for example if you're if you're Parthia, 
and you see that Bostra and Petra have big armies, but Palmyra is looking really weak, and actually Sidon's looking pretty weak, and Damascus is maybe looking pretty weak. Actually, I think Damascus is Seleucid, so ignore that. But those settlements in the north are looking weak. Then, obviously, don't strike in the south, where you're going to have a really tough time. Strike in the north, and what you'll find is you'll always find settlements that have basically one or two units in them. So, for example, actually, Bostra is one that quite often does that. The Egyptians like to go to war with the Seleucids nice and early, and what they'll do is they'll just think, well, we're at war with one faction, we'll just throw all our force at them, and then what they're going to do is they're going to leave settlements vulnerable. If you wait slightly, it won't take long, trust me, if you wait slightly for the Egyptians to declare war on someone, hopefully not you, then what you can do is you can just sweep around the back, take the settlements, and the Egyptians are going to be having a tough time of it. Otherwise, the rules are pretty much the same. Try not to fight them on the open field because that's pretty pointless, and that's a sort of general rule for total war. I don't tend to fight armies on the open field. It's much better to take a settlement than defeat an army on the open field. Another thing is using bridges. If you are going to fight in the open field, you know, if you can tactically place yourself on bridges, then you're going to have a massive advantage, even if your army is technically weaker. But the fact that you have a bridge means you're just automatically that little bit stronger as well. Take as many settlements as you can in quick succession. Memphis is kind of a priority as well. And if you do have the capacity to attack two settlements at once, that's ideal because you want to be splitting up the force. You want the AI to make a decision between one or the other. And what they'll likely do is split up the force and then you'll be able to defeat both of them. Whereas actually, if they, had, they being the Egyptians, kept the force together, then you would have been unlikely to actually defeat them in a one-on-one -on -one battle. That's kind of my general advice. I hope this video hasn't gone on for too long. I have been sort of rambling a little bit, so I hope that it's fairly succinct. But I, I do have sort of rules that work very well in place with Egypt. If you are a faction that's close by and you want to take it a bit slower, fine, try and build up your empire a little bit and then use the tactic which I explained first of all. If you are just thinking, okay, we're going to go for Egypt straight away, maybe have a look at the faction guides. They're quite good at that kind of thing, tailor-made for each faction. But that's basically all I have to say today. I will be back with a video very soon explaining how to defeat the Egyptians on the battlefield as various factions um, because it is quite tif difficult to do so if you don't know what you're doing and I'm going to be using footage from my channel as well. If you want me to create videos on how to defeat other factions, I'm thinking particularly the Romans because people have a tough time defeating the Romans. If you want me to make a video on how to defeat the Romans, then please let me know. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll be back with more faction guides and stuff like that very soon. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.